Chautauqua 2006 is brought to you by the Maryland Humanities Council in partnership with Montgomery College with generous support from Lockheed Martin, Constellation Energy, and the Nysource Charitable Foundation. Chautauqua 2006 is a We the People project of the National Endowment for the Humanities and also has support from the Maryland Division of Historical and Cultural Programs. Additional sponsors are Baltimore's Tremont Suite Hotels and Wisp Resort. Welcome to Montgomery College. I'm Angela Rice Beamer and we're here for a very special program called Chautauqua 2006. Chautauqua is a uniquely American tradition that began in 1874 at Lake Chautauqua, New York. Theodore Roosevelt once called it one of the most American things about America because of its popularity and accessibility. It brought the latest information and entertainment to young and old in small towns across the nation. Even the smallest towns could look forward to an annual Chautauqua visit. Today, scholars and actors portray historical figures in full costume and character before a community audience. This is the eighth year that Chautauqua has come to Montgomery College. The theme is creativity and imagination, and it highlights the genius of some of the world's most creative minds. Paul Robeson, Coco Chanel, Leonardo da Vinci, and tonight, one of the most important figures of the United States industrial transformation, Henry Ford. Well, how are y'all? Boy, that sounded like a bunch of disgruntled General Motors owners. How are all of you tonight? Let's hear a little more enthusiasm. I know that if you own a General Motors car, you generally are unenthusiastic about life because it's been breaking down every other day, right? Yeah, that's true. Hey, okay, let's see this. How many of y'all are, how many are uh, Ford owners? Brought your Ford automobile tonight. Come on, raise your hand proudly. Oh, not too many of you. Well, keep your hands up. I want all the rest of you to look around, because that's the only way you're getting home tonight is catch a ride with them. Because if it's a typical General Motors, it ain't going to make it very far. Uh, you know, I, the young lady just said about Garrett County, I was just out there again the other night, it rained on me. I got a little bit of a cold, so if my <clears throat> voice goes away, just bear with me. But I was out there again, out at Swallow Falls. Hadn't been back there since 1921. What, 19, yeah, 18, 19 years ago now. Uh, it was wonderful. You know, back in 1921, she said Tom and I were there, and, and, and Harvey as well. And, and we were out there, and it, it rained a lot then. It always rains a lot there, <clears throat> I think. Always in July, it seems to, anyway. But I went out there, and we were, you know, I bought with me, or I brought with me, sorry, I brought with me a Lincoln automobile because we were getting ready to purchase the Lincoln Automobile Company and I wanted to take it on a long trip and see how it operated. Well, we were out there at the falls and as I said, it started raining. We were back in the woods, so of course, there was a lot of mud. Well, that car got stuck. Well, we had to attach horses to it to try to pull it out. And we're sitting there in the mud on this road, pulling, trying to pull it out, trying to pull it out. This young fella came up, not much older than you, Young fella comes up and he says, Why, well, mister, you got the wrong automobile. My daddy owns a Ford Model T and he drives it on this road every day with no problem. <laughs> That's true. So if you don't take my word for it, you General Motors owner, take it from that young man. You know, thinking about General Motors gets my blood boiling because it gets me to what I, I really wanted to talk about. And I'm, you know, I'll try to watch my language, but we're in a hell of a fix now, aren't we? You know, I, be, I believe in reincarnation. And I've come back many times, but this is the worst mess we've ever had. This Great Depression is really awful for you and me, the common folk. But, you know, I want to talk about it some. You know, that we got into this place, I'll tell you why. There's a villainous conspiracy. We common people know who it is that did this to us. Bankers, lawyers. People like that, people, how many bankers here? Oh, they're never going to admit it. Now, oh, there's one back there. Proud of it, are you? You blood sucker. It's exactly what you are. 
His whole intent in life seems to be to take farmers and throw them off their farms, repossess their land so he can line their pockets by the difficulties of their fellow Americans. I just don't understand it. But it's part of this villainous conspiracy. It's not all your fault, sir. I know you're just part of this parasitic group that we got in this country. And, and I want to go on about it. Another group is these people. How many of you own stocks? All, oh, a lot of you. And you notice it's all the General Motors owners as well. Bunch of parasites. You're just a bunch of blood-sucking parasites who want to destroy the industrial lifeblood of this country. Am I wrong on that? What do you want? Any of you own stock. What do you want to get out of it? Money. Money. Notice, not one of them said, well, I, I want that company. I want to help that company make a good product. I want to help that company do right by the people of America. I want that company to, to deal with its employees well and do good things. Not one of them says that. All they want is money. They just want to line their pockets. And they're part of the conspiracy with this banker and those lawyers to take care of this. They manipulated us into this depression. Ah. But we live in flabby times, too. The 1920s, you all got real flabby. You know, we started to expect everything would come easy. That we ought to be given everything. You know, I, now I'll say, part of our problem, too, is that fellow in Washington right now down the road, Mr. Franklin Roosevelt. Now, I made the mistake of voting for him in 1932. I thought he'd be a good president. But he's turned out to be almost anti-capitalist. He's trying to destroy America. He's trying to work with the bankers and the lawyers and the stockholders and, and, and trying to, you know, manipulate this country. You know, I'm going to say one more thing about stockholders. Now, because somebody's going to bring up the fact there's stock in Ford Motor Company. Well, yeah, but it's owned by two people. Myself, I own 51%, and my son Edsel owns 49%. In 1916, you know, I, there have been four Ford Motor Companies. This is only the fourth one. The first three died really quickly. You know why? Because I brought in blood-sucking parasites and bankers <laughs> to help me get my dream. And they just destroyed it every time. So finally, I got in with some automobile fellas, but, but I got, you know, Dodge Brothers and others. But that just led to stockholders, too. In 1916, we got rid of them all, bought them out, threw them out. And ever since then, Ford's been owned by me. And I'll tell you the truth. I'd take my factories down brick by brick before I let those parasites get their hands back on it. <laughs>